Hey friends, welcome back to more Entitled People Stories. Hope you're all doing awesome today. Be sure to like and subscribe and let's begin. Do your job. Okay, Karen. So I work in online fulfillment at a large home, garden, and building supply store. Mysterious. My job title comes into play later, as technically we aren't supposed to work with customers directly. Just point them in the right direction or find another associate who works in that department. I had a massive order to grab several heavy and large pieces of sheet metal and screws. Problem is, the sheet metal size I need isn't where it's meant to be, so I'm having to scan pretty much everything to figure out what's what. Bigger problem? This lingering in the wild sadly put me in range of a wild Karen attack. In a raging harpy voice, Karen says, Are you gonna help me or not? I am suddenly very confused looking at her, especially as she hasn't spoken to me at all. Seeming increasingly annoyed, Karen says, Well, I've been standing over there forever and you haven't offered to help me. Um, my bad. I can try. I don't work in this department, so it depends if... Suddenly actively hostile, she says. Try? <laughs> no, you will. It doesn't matter if you work in this department or not. I'm taking calming breaths so I don't lash back, wondering what this woman's problem is. And I say, okay, what do you need? I am definitely unable to control annoyance in my tone, as this woman is yelling at me. This, she says. Not joking when I say she proceeds to suddenly pull out a screw and nearly stab me in the eye, shoving it towards me. I push her hand away, feeling much less calm, as I have a PTSD reaction to people putting hands in my face, much less a freaking screw. Now visibly shaking, I say, Okay ma'am, screws are at the end of the aisle, on the left. What? She interrupts. I already know that, she said. Okay, what size is that? What size do you need? Even angrier, for some reason, she says, You tell me. She takes a step closer, as if trying to seem threatening. I'm unable to hold back, and I say, I have no clue, ma'am. There's an entire wall of screws. It's impossible for me to tell its size by just looking at it. You will not come at me like that. She says to me like she's royal, and I should feel afraid. Your manager would not like that. You think? Well, I can get a manager if you like. Maybe one of them can identify the screw by sight. Don't make me mad today. Just do your job, said Karen. I realize I had already told her exactly where the product she needed would be located. And I say, yes ma'am. I walked away from her to my trolley and proceeded to continue looking for the items on my order. What are you doing? She asked. My job, I said. What was funny was an aisle over. One of our assistant managers actually was nearby. With Karen ranting and stomping like a toddler, I walked over when I noticed him and told him I had two issues. One, can't find the item. Two, got a Karen he may want to talk to. He laughed and showed me where the correct size sheet metal improperly was, and totally ignored her, same as I was, until she huffed loudly and stormed away. I don't think she liked that my manager did like how I handled the situation. Stop slacking off and get to those insurance denials? Sure thing, boss. This happened a few years ago, but was reminded of it because a lot of it is becoming public. Insurance companies are not your friends and will do everything they can to save money, including not paying you for your medically necessary services. There's a lot of news coming out about insurance companies using algorithms to deny claims and doctors signing off on them. Before algorithms, they would have minimum wage employees reading over these claims for the doctors instead. That's what I was. I was 19 years old working for insurance companies denying claims. I would be the first line for doctors to call and give their case for why they thought they needed a service or medicine. For some reason, 19-year-old me with no medical experience was allowed to tell these doctors that services were not needed medically. This job was the easiest yet most miserable job experience I ever had. I was only able to last a few months there. During my last two weeks, I was really slacking off. I was just so burned out. I couldn't stand denying yet another case where someone needed meds and the insurance company didn't want to pay for them. I was reprimanded for not working hard enough and getting processed. I worked faster than I ever had before. That's because I approved every case that came before. Every doctor I spoke to, I just gave them approval. Every prior authorization I saw was approved. During my first week, I did this once and was told to not do it again because I have to follow company guidelines. But I didn't care at this point. 
I probably was able to approve 50 plus cases before I quit. I hope it made a difference to those people. F health insurance companies. Tailgate me? Have fun changing your flat tire out in the boonies. On vacation in the Redwood Forest in Crescent City, California. A little background. On day one, I took this little tiny dirt road about seven miles into the forest for some hiking. Very remote and narrow dirt road with a pretty good sized drop off on one side. On the way back to our camp, I was driving about 10 to 15 miles per hour when I hit a giant dip in the road that I did not see, nor did my wife. We both were shocked because we didn't see anything in the road. It was so bad I had to stop my truck and inspect, fearing the worst, broken axle or flat tire. No damage, so we continued on. Day number two, I go solo to do some hiking in the same area. On the way in, I was keeping an eye out for the big dip to see what happened. Sure enough, there were two or three huge divots in the road, but the way the trees overhang and stuff, it's really hard to see. I continue on and have a great time. I finish my hike and load back into my truck, full-size Ford Diesel, start heading down the road, and a newer Honda Civic comes up behind me and rides really close. There are areas in the road where it's so narrow I don't feel safe. He gets even closer, to where I can't see his headlights. I'm getting more and more angry. There is nowhere to pull over to let him around. I don't feel safe going any faster. I come to the big divot area. I speed up a little and so does the Honda. I know where the divots are in the road. I saddle over them so that my tires don't hit the divots. I see in my rear view mirror, success. He went right into them. I see his car bouncing like crazy and came to a complete stop. I continued on and once down the mountain there is a very long straightaway. I get to the end and he's nowhere in sight. Don't tailgate, especially on back roads through the redwood forest. Rural Revenge I have a remote rural property where I plan to build a cabin someday. In the meantime, my family and I camp there as much as possible since we love it out there. Creek nearby, rolling hills that used to be ditch irrigated pasture. Gorgeous view and pretty much nobody around. One of the few people for miles is the ditch rider that operates a trans mountain water diversion structure farther up the creek, owned by the company that bought the water rights my property had before the previous owner sold it. I had met the ditch rider once before. He was gruff at first, but as I curiously questioned him about his work, he opened up a little bit. Okay, enough backstory. One Friday evening, my family and I arrived to camp out only to find a group of kids in their late teens in the upper field. Pickup truck, circle of tents, and large bonfire. I drove by them on the dirt road, and it looked like they were having a pretty chill get-together. I didn't mind so much that they were trespassing, but we were in a stage 2 fire ban, so having a fire was a big deal. Here in Colorado, it doesn't take much for a fire to spread, and before you know it, thousands of acres are scorched. So I parked my vehicle at our building site left my wife and daughter there and went up to talk to them. Map in hand, I pointed out that this was private property and showed them some of my favorite camping spots in the nearby National Forest and BLM. But since they had already set up camp, they could stay where they were for the weekend. I made the offer that if they wanted to come back in the future, they could if they just asked me beforehand. Not a big deal, I thought. However, I told them that we were in a stage 2 fire ban and flame, including campfires and smoking outdoors, was absolutely prohibited. I asked that they put out the fire immediately, and they did. As I was walking away, I heard one of them say, F***er thinks he owns the place. And they all laughed. I was a little offended considering how I could have easily told them to get the hell out. But whatever. You know how male teens can be when trying to impress a group. Lo and behold, an hour later when I walk back up to check on them, there's a bonfire twice as big as the first one. A f*** you to me, and more importantly, a massive middle finger to the well-being of the entire region. I decide I need to teach these little s*** a lesson. I devised a perfect plan. Remember when I said that this used to be ditch irrigated pasture? All the old water structures were still in place, and in pretty good condition. Only problem was, I didn't have a water right. So I drove up to the ditch rider's cabin, and he remembered me from when we had met. I don't think he gets a lot of visitors. I explained the situation, and his rough exterior turned to outright glee as he came up with the same plan I had. Together, we shut his company's headgate by about half, allowing a surge of water to flow downstream, 
and then drove down to the headgate of my old ditch and opened it fully. From the dirt road on the ridge above, we watched as the water crept across the field, soaked their tents, and presumably their sleeping gear, and drowned the fire with a steaming hiss. A mad scramble ensued, as they hastily loaded up their gear and drove away. Well, one got stuck in the soggy field for a few minutes, and needed to get pulled out. As they passed us on the dirt road out, I get a nasty look from the guy who had so indiscreetly told me off. I chuckled to myself. It's not like I own the place. Karen called the police to claim that I physically hit her with my car in the Costco parking lot. I have a dash cam. Title basically says it all. I have an inconspicuous dash cam on my car because I live the daily hazard of driving in the city. Yesterday a woman walked out in front of my car from the side, completely disregarding the moving vehicle and the fact that, I don't know, maybe I didn't effing see her. I stopped more than 15 feet from her, but came to a screeching halt because it scared the hell out of me. She came up and banged on my window. I shouldn't have engaged at all, but I cracked it and apologized for scaring her, then started to drive off. She continued beating on the side of my car and screaming at me, chased me down to the parking spot and screamed that she was calling the police. I hung out, not saying anything until they arrived. I gave them my info, showed them the dashcam footage, and was promptly dismissed to go about my day. Justice enough for me, though I do wish I knew what happened to her. That is it for today guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel for more. So I'm out of here, have an awesome day and I'll see you all next time.